In this section, we want to introduce the product rule and the quotient rule, um, two rules for taking derivatives of certain types of functions. And I just want to forewarn you, these rules lead to, or people forgetting these rules, lead to some of the most common problems in calculus courses. So let's start off by taking a look at differentiating products, the method for how we want to do this, and then identify the mistake that people often make. So for some given function, y equals f of x times g of x. So if whatever function we're differentiating is the product of two functions, then the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be found by taking the derivative of the first function times the second function left completely unchanged plus the derivative of the first function completely unchanged times the derivative of the second function. So these two functions get broken up into two terms. In the first term, we differentiate the first function. In the second term, we differentiate the second function. The main problem or the main mistake that people make with these types of problems is that they see a problem where we have the derivative of the product of two functions and they differentiate that by taking the derivative of the first function times the derivative of the second function. So basically just applying that derivative to both of the functions directly. So what I want to stress is that is a mistake you want to make sure that you don't make. Whenever we see the product of two functions, we need to use this expanded rule in order to properly find that derivative. So let's look at an example of that. In our first example, we want to take the derivative of 5x cubed times the quantity x squared minus 6. So our first function in this case is 5x cubed, and our second function is x squared minus 6. So to find the derivative of this function, in the first term, we take the derivative of the first function and then multiply that by the second function, which is again completely unchanged. And then in the second term, we want to take the derivative of the second function, meaning the first function is completely unchanged. So we always have to set up this expanded rule and then apply the differentiation. So the derivative of 5x cubed will give us 15x squared times the x squared minus 6, which again doesn't change, plus the 5x cubed, which doesn't change, times the derivative of x squared minus 6, which will be 2x. So the next thing we can do is distribute through. So this will become 15x to the fourth minus 90x squared plus 10x to the fourth. And then combining like terms, we can simplify this to 25x to the fourth minus 90x squared. So applying the product rule is a lengthier process. But when we have the product of two functions, that's the route we have to apply. Or at least in most cases. There's actually an advantage or a trick that we could have taken care of in this problem. In example two, we have the exact same function. We want to find that derivative, but in this particular case, we're going to do that without applying the product rule. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite the function as 5x to the fifth minus 30x cubed. So what we've done is rewritten the function. So now we just have the difference of two power functions which means since these are being added or subtracted from each other, now we can just differentiate term by term. So the derivative will be 5x to, or 25x to the fourth minus 90x squared. So obviously this approach in example two was a lot faster. We distributed and then the derivative was one step. In example one, it took us several steps to get to that final answer. So one question becomes, why do we need this expanded approach? 
And the reason is that in example two, well, example one and two, we had a function where we could distribute, we could rewrite that to match some of our earlier properties. So in that case, we could use a less complicated approach. But what we're going to see in example three is a function that we don't have the option of rewriting. There's no way to distribute anything through with 4x e to the x. There's no way to manipulate this expression to match an earlier property, meaning the product rule is going to be our only alternative. 